So I've always been curious about this. Is there an actual law in Australia that before you can work in the film industry, you have to do neighbors? <laughs> It seems like that, doesn't yeah. it? Either neighbours or home in a way. That's like our boot camp. And unless you do one of them, you can't leave the country I, and go to Hollywood. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like the gateway. It's, a, it's an unwritten rule, yeah. Um, this has been an amazing year. And I, first, I'm just blown away by your accent in The Wolf of Wall Street. Even if that was the only amazing <laughs> thing about that film, it's spot on perfect. Thank you, thank you. I'm so happy. So many people from Bay Ridge have gone, it was perfect. There was nothing to fault. And I'm like, great, I can die happy. Yeah, and that's and it's so particular. And I think that it's a part of what he does so well, which is these x-rays of a culture. Mm. Um, what sort of research did you do for the film? How did you, how did you get comfortable in the world of the Duchess? Well, Obviously, the books helped a lot because, you know, you really get an idea of the world. I also worked, specifically dialect-related, we worked with Tim Monick, who's, you know, one of the best dialect coaches in the world. So um, we had Tim on set with us all the time and, um, and, and worked, you know, prior to filming. And I also had voice recordings of women from Bay Ridge, so you can kind of get an idea of the intonation of how they speak and a little bit of their attitude. Not necessarily there were women with attitude, there were recordings of women who were nurses or, you know, people who worked in offices or whatever. Um, but as far as the attitude, I have a friend that grew up, not in Brooklyn, she grew up in Queens actually, and she's got more attitude than anyone I've ever encountered <laughs> in my life. And I truly never met anyone like that in Australia. You just don't come across people like that in Australia. It just wouldn't be tolerated in Australia. Everyone's too laid back. But um, meeting people like her really just gave, gave me the sense that people like that existed in the world and that it was okay for me to go as far with that as, you know, as far as I did with my character and that I wasn't just being, creating a caricature that there was, or that, that could be authentic. So, uh, Reading the script the first time, you, you had to be struck by the fact that they were going to require a lot of you. It is a daring piece of writing mm -hmm. and it is, it requires fearlessness on the part of the actors. Um, any hesitations or was it just, this is Martin Scorsese, I'm going to dig in and do it what it is. No, I mean, I of course there was a lot of hesitation and trepidation on my behalf. Um, as there or I mean, I feel like when you undertake any big task, you kind of have this crisis of faith in yourself and you're like, I can't do it. It's I couldn't, I, I just can't. So I, I had that and, and for, you know, for a brief moment I was like, I guess I'm not gonna do the role. I, I, I can't do nudity and I can't, I would never be good enough for this anyway. And, and then, you know, the thought occurred to me, oh, I guess who's going to play it then? And then that just infuriated me, the thought of someone else playing my role. I was like, well, they couldn't possibly do the role. No, I have to do it, because no one else could possibly do the role. So, so um, yes, no, I had my moment of uh, my crisis of faith. It myself. feels like the film is, I, and like any of his movies, there's so many classic beats that you can pull out in scenes that just by themselves are like a mini movie. The yeah. power struggle between the two of you in that yes. one sequence. Yeah is I think one of the best articulated power struggles I've ever seen between a couple. Um, and that had to just be a blast to stage and shoot and, and figure out how to play it. I'm so happy you said that because that truly was the most gratifying acting experience I've had. Workshopping that scene and also because it was just such a cathartic moment for us in the stage of shooting we were at and also in the film, the stage we're at in the film, um, it's a very climatic point in the relationship and, and then she, you know, leaves the film and you don't see her again. But also the way it w played out in real time, we were, we'd been shooting all the things in the mansion out in Long Island. We'd been in that house for three weeks, you know, 18 hour days. We were beyond exhausted, like delirious with exhaustion and, um, and, and it, the scene was, uh, different on paper. And the night before, we, we, we kind of thought we're missing something, there's something not right. So we kind of started workshopping at four in the morning, Marty, Leo and I, and, and it kind of ended up escalating and becoming this, this big thing. And I, and I don't think if we, if we had planned it, it wouldn't have had that raw kinetic energy that it, it ended up having. So um, it ended up being cathartic, both for, in, for the film's sake, but both for us as well. So um, it ended up being the most, satisfying thing I've ever I've ever worked on. Yeah, it was it was so much fun to shoot. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at Hitfix on Twitter or visit hitfix.com.